My dudes, the 2.7 special live stream just finished, and we have some more explanations on what's going on with some of the optimizations coming to 3.0. Plus, I think they also talk about something that, you know, there might be a little bit of secrets to it. And I'm pretty excited for that. But before we get into that, make sure to like, comment, subscribe on this video. Don't forget to check out my ever wonderful sponsor, Gamersups, which later today we do have the Hollow Live releases of Mori Calliope and Crony which are going to be fantastic cups and shirts. I'm excited for that. I'm a big Hollow Live guy. I love VTubers in general. They're freaking awesome. So I'm pretty stoked on that. But without any further delay, let's go ahead and dive into this developer radio. Now, I'm tired. I just got done with the live stream. I thought I was done, but there's more of this stuff right here. They're actually going to go into a bunch of the stuff that's going on for three. Well, not a bunch, but some good stuff for 3.0, right? So let's go ahead and dive into this. So relic subsidiary stat customization function available in version 3.0 aside from customizing a relics main stat you can also use the new wishful resin item to customize its subsidiary stats this allows the body feet sphere and link rope to uh, all be adjustable based on self-molding resins consumed and subsidiary stats set by wishful resin consumed which does make sense because if you're using the self-molding resin to get a certain main stat it's only going to work on those four things so makes a lot of sense you can't change the uh, main stat of the other two but it does make me kind of sad because it, you can't use the wishful resin on the headpiece or the gloves so but at the same time i think it's perfect this way because you actually have a harder time getting the perfect piece for your chest plate your boots uh orb and rope so makes a lot of sense so how is this going to work well with the main stat adjustment or you know what, what was the item called the self-molding resin right with the self-molding resin you would only get the one main stat and you wouldn't be able to use any wishful resin because you're not worried about the substats. If you're going for a substat, it's going to take one and one. One self-molding resin and one wrist, wrist, one wishful resin. And then if you want to do two stats, this is where it gets kind of tricky. You're going to use four wishful resin instead of one and a self-molding resin. Now, again, I don't like that it's four, but I understand why because they don't want you abusing it. Stuff like that, right? But I am still very excited for it because it is a very, very good thing. Now, I do want to see if they do talk about it here. It looks like they do go more into it. Wishful resin must be used in conjunction with self-molding resin. It cannot be used alone. Hand and head type cavern relics uh, that cannot have main stats set also can't be affected. And here it's going to go over the actual stuff that happens with Wishful Resin, like how it's going to work. After the 3.0 update, Trailblazers can obtain Wishful Resins through the following means at the start of each update. 1. Nameless Honor. A Wishful Resin can be obtained for free via Nameless Gift after completing the weekly or periodic missions and reaching a certain level. Additionally, purchasing Nameless Glory... Uh, and reaching a certain level will also allow you to obtain an additional additional wishful resin so you get one from the battle pass for free but you can also get a second one if you buy the ba battle pass extension so makes sense that's exactly how genshin did it um synthesis you can consume 800 relic remains to form one wishful resin two can be synthesized at most is that per update that's what I'm guessing. So it's exactly like Genshin's, which I was actually very, very sad about. Um, yeah, it kind of, I, I don't like that, but I understand where they're coming from. I understand why they're doing it. It still sucks because I wish it, there wasn't that much of a limit, but I understand why they do it. Uh, exchange, a one-to-one -one exchange rate with self-modeling resins. Up to three can be exchanged every month. So if you have a lot of self-modeling resin and you don't want to use that, you could turn it in one for one. However, I don't entirely like that because for me, I never, I, I don't think I'm ever going to turn in my self-modeling resin. I, I need that every single time. Additionally, you could obtain wishful resins by completing certain pieces of content. Okay, so they're going to add even more of that there too. So I do like that. Now, they do also have a relic reroll function, which I'm very excited for. And I hope that this is... Uh, something to where it's not like heavily limited 
In a new version, Trailblazers can consume one variable die to re-roll a five-star relic at level 15. After re-rolling, the number of enhancement attempts that can be made for existing subsidiary stats will be redistributed. The number of enhancements before and after re-rolling will not change. Trailblazers can choose based on the results of the re-roll to either use the original stats or the new stats offered. I dig that because that's kind of like what uh, Nikkei does with their, uh, um, their what is it? I, I, I'm losing it, Scoobs. But their armor pieces as well. They do that as well. So I, I do like that. But reroll will not change the subsidiary stats that already exist. That's pretty much a given. As such, if the relic already has three subsidiary stats before getting enhanced, then the new stat obtained after three levels of enhancement will be the only one rerolled. Ooh, okay. So that means that if you have a three piece and you roll defense as the third piece, right? Or the fourth piece, that means that when you re-roll, it might not be defense. Let me reread that again just to make sure. As such, if the relic already has three subsidiary stats before getting enhanced, then the new stat obtained after three levels of enhancement will be the only one re-rolled. So that means that if you get a terrible fourth stat, you could re-roll to get a brand new stat. That's pretty dang good, right? Sorry for spitting on the camera a little bit. That's really good. I like that, okay? I really, really dig that change. I, I think that that's a very welcome change on top of being able to re-roll your uh, distributions for the stats as well. Very nice, very bug. Okay, Trailblazers can obtain variable dice through the following means. Synthesis. You can consume three self-modeling resins to synthesize one variable die. Dude, no. That's so many. Unless they're going to bump up how much self-modeling resin we're going to get. That is such a terrible exchange. Nameless Honor. After purchasing the Nameless Glory, you can obtain one of this by reaching a certain level through completing missions okay so it's going to be very tricky to get your variable dice but yeah i i think there's there's some good opportunities there right all right here's a change that i was looking at and i saw this through a tweet that brax made actually big shout out to brax phone love the content man um after version 3.0 arrives enhanced relics can also be salvaged directly that is to say that enhanced relics will or can be more than just relic XP materials. Enhanced relics of two, three, four star rarities can be salvaged as lost gold fragments and credits. Okay. Enhanced relics of the five star rarity can be salvaged as lost gold fragments and credits or converted into a certain amount of relic remains. So it depends on. Okay. So it actually shows here at the bottom. The number of lost gold fragments gained after salvaging will be equal to that which is used as relic EXP materials during leveling. Five-star relics that are already enhanced to level 15 will be converted into 400 relic remains when salvaged. That's big. Now, what does that mean? If you level up a relic to level 15, you can go and take 400 relic remains, right? Or 400 relic remains. Is the relic remains the level up material? I think so, actually. Okay. Maybe I was reading that wrong. But that's still pretty dang good, actually. That's very, very good. I really, really dig that. That's such an amazing freaking change right there. So many good, thi good things coming to uh, Honkai Star. There is one thing I want to check out, too. I was actually looking at the pages. And I really wanted to see if there was another thing. Um, I did see something, I think, along here. Yes. So, this was something I wanted to talk about. Now, as you can see, and I, I found this out again through Brax. Big shout out to Braxophone. That this is the trailer for everything that's going on. And it showed a bunch of characters. Uh, Uglia, Tribby, Ana uh, An Anoxa. I keep on messing that up. Hyacene, Maide, Cypher, uh, Castorice. Finon, uh, Hyselins. I didn't see that one before. Um, that, that one's a new one to me. Uh, Seradra, 
And then there was a couple others. But if you look at these two, right? They're hidden. And it just so happens that they kind of match the letters of certain characters from a certain franchise that's going to be collabing with Honkai Star Rail. If you look, you got this one right here. And it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that goes to Gilgamesh. G I G A H M E S H. I think that's how you spell his name. I'm pretty sure. And then you have five, one, two, three, four, five, Saber, S A B E R. I think this is the first hint of which Fate Stay Night characters are actually going to be coming to Hawkeye Star Rail. So I'm very pumped for this. This was a very, very good live stream and a lot of really, really good uh, optimizations coming along the way. But let me know in the comments down below what you think. Are you excited for the new Relic optimizations or are you excited for the possibility of Gilgamesh and Saber making their way to Honkai Star Rail? Once again, this is Tyson Daisetsu signing off. Thank you so much and we will see you in the next episode. Video? Episode? Video? Whatever. Please take care and be safe.